hello students in today's session we will be discussing about the topic conservation of forest and wildlife before starting the topic we should have a look on the topics which we have already completed in the last class the topics are biodiversity meaning of biodiversity then flora and fauna and international union for conservation of nature and natural resources according to iucn the existing plants and animals are categorized into six they are normal species endangered species vulnerable species rare species endemic species extinct species and after that causes of depletion of flora and fauna already we discussed in detail about the various causes of depletion of flora and fauna next topic is social effect of resource depletion then next one is that is today's topic why do we need to conserve our forest and wildlife do you know children conservation teaches us the lessons of sharing and caring conservation of forest and wildlife is essential because it preserves the ecological diversity and our life support systems such as water air and soil it also preserves the genetic diversity of plants and animals for better growth of species and breeding next conservation of forests and wildlife in india conservation of forest and wildlife in india the indian wildlife protection act was implemented in 1972 what was the aim of this act name of the act is indian wildlife protection act when it was implemented it was implemented in 1972 let's see what was that act and what was its aim the aim of the program was towards protecting the remaining population of certain endangered species by banning hunting giving legal protection to their habitats and restricting trade in wildlife it means banning hunting poaching and also providing legal protection to their habitats and restricting their trade so it is the main purpose of this indian wildlife act of 1972 second purpose is that central and many state governments established national parks and wildlife sanctuaries so central and state governments are directly monitoring these endangered species and also restricting its hunting and poaching the central government also announced several projects for protecting specific animals which were gravely threatened because such animals are in the category of endangered their survival is in danger including the tiger next topic is government's categorization of forest do you know the government has been categorized the indian forest into three let's see which are that categories of forest first is reserved forest 
second protected forest third is unclassed forest what is reserved forest reserved forest that is more than half of the total forest land has been declared reserved forest more than 50% of the total forest land has been declared as reserved who declared it as reserved the government of india the government of india declared these forests are reserved which is regarded as the most valuable as far as the conservation of forests and wildlife resources are concerned these forests are reserved for the conservation of forests and wildlife how much percentage of these forests are there 50 percent 50 percent of indian forests are classified as a reserved forest second category protected forest protected forest that is almost one third of the total forest area almost one third of the total forest area is protected forest as declared by the forest department this forest land are protected from any other depletion it means these forests are under the observation of the government so these forest land are protected from further depletion third is unclassed forests unclassed forests are those forests which are not classified as reserved or protected these are other forests and wastelands belonging to both government and private individuals and communities so who owns these forests these forests are owned by government private individuals and communities so these are the three categories of forests now new trends in conservation policy conservation of forests and wildlife first is that increase biodiversity first policy of conservation is increase biodiversity so what are the features of it and what are the steps taken for this the conservation projects are now focusing on biodiversity rather than on a few of its components conservation of forests and wildlife largely focused on biodiversity there is now a more intensive search for different conservation measures for maintaining biodiversity more intensive research works are necessary increasingly even in insects are beginning to find a place in conservation planning even insects are also find a place in conservation planning it means not avoiding or ignoring or neglecting even an insect also means an insect is also protecting under biodiversity in the notification under wildlife act of 1980 and 1986 Several hundred butterflies, moths, beetles, and one dragonfly have been added to the list of protected species. See, even an insect is also protecting. Means not ignoring the life of even an insect also. See the importance of biodiversity. see intensive care intensive search is given for maintaining biodiversity and also included the life of each and every types of insects in it so this notification has been given under wildlife act of 1980 and 1986 so this is a conservation policy of the government of india in 1991 for the first time plants were also added to the list not only animals and insects 
even plants were also included in the list for protecting or conserving starting with the six species six species are got importance for adding adding the conservation list adding in the conservation list now our next important topic is about community and conservation what is the role of community for conserving forests do you know that in some areas of india local communities are struggling to conserve these habitats along with the government officials recognizing that only this will secure their own long term livelihood as you know these forest people largely depend on forests for their livelihood so they take the responsibility to protect these forests than government officials and they support the government officials to protect and preserve these forests and wildlife from poaching or hunting for example in sariska tiger reserve rajasthan do you know where it is in rajasthan sariska tiger reserve villagers have fought against mining by citing the wildlife protection act there the villagers of rajasthan they protect sariska tiger reserve by against mining activities you know mining activities will cause danger for the habitat of this tiger population so against mining villagers are highly alert of protecting these reserves in many areas villagers themselves are protecting habitats and explicitly rejecting government involvement in some areas villagers themselves take the responsibility of protecting habitats without the interference of government for example the inhabitants of five villages in the alwar district of rajasthan which is a district alwar alwar district of which state rajasthan have declared 1200 hectares of forest as the bhairo de dekhav sanctuary what is the name of the sanctuary bhairo de dekhav sanctuary how many villages took the responsibility of protecting it five villages five villages of which state rajasthan five villages in the alwar district of rajasthan they declared bhairo de dekhav sanctuary declaring their own set of rules they made their own rules and regulations for protecting that sanctuary and regulations they made which do not allow hunting and are protecting the wildlife against any outside encroachment so what is the role of the people in alwar district the role of people of alwar district of rajasthan is that they protect that sanctuary they protect the sanctuary of bhairo de dekhav sanctuary and they made their own rules and regulations and accordingly no outsiders are allowed to enter the forest and hunt, do hunting or uh, any kind of poaching or destroying wildlife or forest areas these villages they protect the forest they protect the wildlife against any kind of outside interference this is the role of villages this is the role of community for protecting wildlife and forests next nature worship is an age old tribal belief do you know that tribal people they worship nature they worship trees and plants they see forest as their source of livelihood and so they worship their source of livelihood and they blindly worship plants and trees so nature worship is an age old tribal belief based on the premise that all creations of nature have to be protected according to them 
all creations of nature have to be protected that we are not doing we least bother about the creations of nature we are we are here to destroy the beautiful creations of nature that's why we are facing the problems of depletion of ozone layer increasing temperature increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere what else we are not facing because of careless attitude of we people towards the environment but see the innocent people of villages or the tribal people or the forest people they worship nature they worship forest and they take care of forest carefully such beliefs the belief of nature worship have preserved several virgin forests in pristine form called sacred groves virgin which is not touched by anybody which is not destroyed by anybody in its original form so these beliefs of the people preserved so many virgin forests in its own original form called sacred groves sacred they treat that forest as sacred that means the forest of god and the goddesses they see some of the forest trees or plants as sacred that is they give its position as the position of god and the goddesses these patches of forest or parts of large forest have been left untouched by the local people and any interference with them is banned this is what is called virgin vegetation virgin vegetation or natural vegetation that already you told in last class that is in ninth standard virgin vegetation or natural vegetation means it is a plant community which is not disturbed or replaced by human beings that plant community which grows naturally without the interference of human beings so that virgin vegetation can be seen now only in the interior parts of the country where human beings accessibility is very difficult another example the mundas and sandal of chota nagpur region they are also forest people tribal people they also worship very sincerely blindly they worship the earth god forest they worship mahua and kadamba trees and the tribes of orissa and bihar worship tamarind and mango trees during weddings this is the belief of these people to many of us people and banyan trees are considered sacred we also worship these trees indian society comprises several cultures because we live in a land of multi culture that different culture is our beauty we accept and admit different culture diversity and we practice to live in harmony and we accommodate cultural diversities differences languages really features living style of different people in different parts of the country each with its own set of traditional methods of conserving nature and its creations in indian society several cultures having its own set of traditional methods of conserving nature and its creations different people 
living in different areas follow their own rules and regulations for protecting nature and natural resources sacred qualities sacred qualities are often ascribed to springs mountain peaks plants and animals which are closely protected we not only protect plants and trees we protect mountain peaks animals and also we find troops of macaques and langurs around the many temples we protect them that is our culture that is our tradition they are fed daily and treated as part of temple devotees because it is our belief we follow that we believes we never question such things no science can question such beliefs because we follow that that is our tradition in and around bishnoi villages in rajasthan herds of black buck you know black buck endangered species then nilgai and peacocks can be seen as an integral part of the community and nobody harm them because these animals and the birds they roam around the people or within the community and nobody harms them because these species are familiar with the people living in that area another role of community for protecting uh <coughs> forest and wildlife is that the famous chipko movement you may heard about chipko movement very famous that is in the himalayas not only successfully resisted deforestation in several areas but has also shown that community afforestation with indigenous species can be enormously successful this chipko movement that is famous in himalayan regions where they not only stopped deforestation but promoted afforestation with the help of community especially indigenous species you know what is indigenous species the species which are belong to that regions local species and they got enormous success in its field farmers and citizens groups like beej bachao andolan in tehri and navadhanya have shown that adequate levels of diversified crop production without the use of synthetic chemicals are possible and economically viable here farmers and citizens groups are against the use of chemical fertilizers they are for growing plants naturally means they are against the use of synthetic chemicals their andolan is protecting seeds that is beej bachao andolan such andolans are seen in tehri as well as navadhanya see here adequate levels of diversified crop production is done means adequate sufficient quantities of different crop production is done with the help of natural manure not synthetic chemicals next is in india joint forest management jfm 
joint forest management program furnishes a good example for involving local communities in the management and restoration of degraded forests it is found in orissa joint forest management the program has been in formal existence since 1988 when the state of orissa passed with the first resolution for joint forest management what is joint forest management here state government and the community collectively protect forests this is joint forest management it depends on the formation of local institutions village institutions which undertake protection activities mostly on degraded forests land managed by the forest department see here village people undertake protection activities on degraded forests with the help of forest department that is joint forest management degraded forests will be protected by community people with the help of forest department in return the members of these communities are entitled to intermediary benefits so in return these communities get what these communities get some benefits like non timber forest producers and share in that timber harvested by successful production it means these people get fuel wood non timber forest producers they can collect forest producers that that is not a timber timber product timber they can't collect they can collect other forest producers and also get a share in the timber harvest so this is the benefit of joint forest management organized by the government of orissa collectively community and the forest department uh, take the responsibility of protecting forest the clear lesson from the dynamics of both environmental destruction and reconstruction in india is that local communities everywhere have to be involved in some kind of natural resource management from this topic it is very clear that local communities are largely involved in some kind of natural resource management not only the government community played a very important role for protecting natural resources but there is still a long way to go before local communities are at the center stage in decision making but still we have to go a long way in this regard protecting forest and wildlife accept only those economic or developmental activities that are people centric what we need it should be people centric it should be concentrated in people only not with the hand of government environment friendly and economically rewarding process should be there then only we can achieve the aim of conserving forest and wildlife that's all for today's class and tomorrow we will be back with doubt clearing session of the chapter forest and wildlife